My name is James Phillips. I'm an attorney. I've been an attorney now for 14 years. I practice military law and I've been practicing military law for 14 years. I was a JAG for a number of years out at Fort Campbell. During that period of time, I was the 2nd Brigade Trial Counsel for the 101st Airborne Division, acted as a prosecutor during that period of time. I deployed to Mosul with them also. I've also been the Chief of Legal Assistance and I was also the uh, trial defense services attorney. I am currently running my own law firm in the Phillips Law Office, and I'm the founding member of that. And I have been a civilian defense counsel um, practicing in court martials, administrative separation boards, VA claims, you name it, I've done it when it comes to the military. And I'm still actively involved in being a military defense counsel or civilian defense counsel. I'm going to today talk about administrative separation boards. Now, you don't get to an administrative separation board in the U.S. Army unless you have six years of service or they're recommending you for an other than honorable discharge. This is one of the reasons why you see so many people get out on general discharges because it just is so much easier for the government to have you get out of the military if you're under six years. By just giving you a general, you don't have the right to a board. They don't have to take, waste the time in going to a board. And they also don't have to prepare and bring witnesses and give you all the due process rights that go along with being recommended for an other than honorable. If you have uh, over six years of time in service, then that kicks in and you are allowed to have the board at that point. The thing about that too is it also counts reserve time. So you have to really be careful about this. If you say, look, I, I just I don't have enough active service time, you can actually factor in time that you have from uh, from your total active service time because the requirement is met by total time in service. Now, if you are not eligible for the uh, board, it, it's pretty much a paper drill and and you know, that's something that, that we can file rebuttals. We can take the case on as far as a paper case, but generally that fight is really going to take place later at the Army Board of Correctional Military Records. So the governing regulation is Army Regulation 635-200. That regulation controls the separations from the military. It handles ones that are also uh, don't require a board, things like indeterminate service, but it, it involved, you know, there's all kinds of things like hardship, a number of different uh, chapters, or you know, chap which under Army 635 200, there's chapters, and the chapters control what kind of discharge that you get out of. Um, now, there's also a chapter 10, and that relates specifically to discharge in a little court martial. You'd have to be court martialed at the time, and then you request to get around your court martial and not have to go to a court martial, and you take a chapter 10. What I'm talking about today is something different. I'm talking about boards where you have been recommended for separation and you want to stay in and you have over six years in or they're recommending you for an other than honorable. Now, if you want to get out, you don't have to go to a board and many times you can put in what's called a conditional waiver and ask, say, look, I don't want that under other than honorable discharge, but I will take an honorable or I will take a general if you let me out and I'll waive my board. So that is something that is an option for you to put in a conditional waiver if you just want to get out and you don't want to fight it. What I'm really talking about is people that want to fight their boards and, and are trying to stay in. And generally with the change in the military these days, there's been a huge push to kick people out. We are still right now looking at almost 100,000 people that are going to be dropped down where the roles are still dropping even lower. And we're, we're now going to get to a place where we are at pre-World War II levels as far as the total number of soldiers that are going to be in the U.S. Army. And that's a huge number. And they've pretty much already culled through everybody that has had a black mark up till now. And now what HRC is doing is they're going back and DA is doing what they're doing is they're going back and they're looking at people's records and looking for things as many as 10 years ago and bringing that back up and separating people because they are trying to just find reasons to let people go. I recently had a, a soldier that um, had misconduct that was over eight years old. They still went to a board on it and um, it was quite a fight that we went to. So as we go forward, the main things that we're going to talk about is if you are if you are getting separated, you normally know the reason that you're getting separated prior to ever getting notification of the paperwork. 
The paperwork itself uh, is going to come as a result of either some kind of misconduct, problem with family care plan, whatever it may be, but you're going to have knowledge of what it is that, that's happened and what is going wrong in your career prior to you ever getting notification of your separation. Once you get the notification paperwork, there's a place where you, you sign off on it, and it just is a notification of the reasons why they are separating you. That paperwork is really not that significant. You sign it, you take it, and at that point, if you want to hire a civilian counsel, you should, should go find a civilian counsel. If not, then you're going to get an appointment with trial defense services, and either way, you're going to be getting ready for your board. The next process is a bit of discovery process where normally the counsel gets a hold of the trial counsel and the defense counsel goes and asks for things like police reports, statements, anything that is going to be prepped for the board. After that, there's usually a time where I work with my clients and we find um, the witnesses that we're going to call. Generally, what you have to look at is at the board proceedings, there are three things that you're going to have to look at. One, the first question is whether there's going to be a finding of fact that whatever the reason that you're getting out of the military, whether or not that is actually true, and that's the first finding. So, for example, if you had a patterns of misconduct separation under Chapter 14-12 Bravo, that chapter requires that there be a pattern of misconduct. And a lot of times there's going to be counseling statements, there's going to be police reports, anything along those lines, statements that go along with it to show that there has been this pattern of misconduct over some discrete period of time. That is what we're going to look into and what we may fight if there is an actual fight there. Because at the board, the first thing they have to prove is that there was a pattern of misconduct. The second thing that we're going to have to look at is whether or not, if there is a finding of fact that there's been a pattern of misconduct, and I'm, I'm just using that example, it could be whatever reason you're getting separated for, but if there is a pattern of misconduct, then whether or not the soldier should be retained. So the second prong of the fight is going to be whether or not retention. And we call in witnesses for that, and generally we're looking for any, um, we can call you a wife, we can call chain of command, we can call members from the past time in service, and basically what you're using is witnesses to talk about character, you're talking about reasons to stay in, type of, of work ethic, type of rehabilitative potential, all those things come into play for number two, which is the reason that we want you to stay in, so retention. The third thing that we look at is whether or not, if there isn't going to be retention, whether or not you are going to be separated from the military and what type of discharge that's going to be. At a board, depending on what the recommendations are from the chain of command, there are three types of, of separation that you can get, either other than honorable, which is the lowest, general under honorable conditions, or finally an honorable discharge. And so the final fight ends up being what kind of discharge. If you win at any level, say there is no finding that there's been misconduct, the board finds there's retention, off you go. If you if there's a finding of misconduct, but you move to the second prong, which says retention, you never then have to go on to what type of discharge. And finally, if you, the first two prongs are met, you end up going to what type of discharge you're going to get. So once, the, once you go to the board, the board generally progresses kind of like a trial. There's usually opening and closing statements. Uh, we get to question, we, we get to question witnesses back and forth. We give closing arguments, and then that's kind of it. The, there's no rules of evidence, and so this is a no holds barred kind of hearing. And the problem with these hearings is. Any kind of hearsay comes in, and I've literally seen it turn into, you know, one witness after another comes up and basically bashes my client because they just don't like him. There's not a lot you can do about that. You can object to it. You can tell the board president we don't like it. But if the board president decides it's coming in, it's coming in. And that creates a lot of different problems because it can seem very unfair to the soldiers some of the things that are going to come in. Once you're done with the board, the next thing that happens is is that you go through and you get you usually leave for a little bit, you come back and the board directs which one of those three prongs that they're going to hit. And if you're if you're discharged, that ends up being a recommendation up to the general court martial convening authority. And depending on your rank and your time of service, it could possibly also go to the Department of Army after that. There's not really a lot of right to appeal for 
the separation board. Generally, we can put in statements along the way after the board to go to the convening authority and ask him to rescind the decision. We can also go and, and send things to DA, but it's just a very limited right of appeal. The real place that you appeal is once you've gotten out, you can go to the Army Discharge Review Board to go back and review the discharge and review what happened at the board and see whether or not it was procedurally correct. If that fails, you can then go to the Army Board of Correction and Military Records. So that's pretty much the process for administrative separation boards. I would generally say that, that you need to have civilian counsel in these boards because there's a lot of work that needs to be put into it and experience really does matter. This is a very dangerous environment right now with all the sexual assault allegations and the maltreatment allegations that are out there, especially for senior NCOs. And I would just suggest to you that you do not go in unprepared and you do not go in without having civilian counsel. TDS is fine, but a lot of times the, the problem with the green suitors is there can be a perception that things are sometimes not fair. Um, so if you need me, give me a call. Thanks. Bye.